And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Udanoceratops, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It was a leptoceratopsid dinosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Mongolia, in the Jagdokta Formation. It's estimated to be about 13 feet or 4 meters long and weigh 1,500 pounds or 700 kilograms. It's the largest known leptoceratopsid that we know of so far. That is pretty big for a leptoceratopsid. I always think of them as little, tiny, cutesy ceratopsians. Yeah. I walked on four legs. The paleo art shows it having a short tail. Its skull was about 24 inches or 60 centimeters long, and it had a short, deep skull, as well as a short frill and no horns on the nose or over the eyes. It had robust, deep jaws and a curved lower jaw and a parrot-like, toothless beak. It was herbivorous. It probably grasped or cropped vegetation with its beak and sheared and crushed with its teeth. It probably ate tough vegetation. The holotype was found in the 1980s, and it was described in 1992 by Sergei Kurzanov. The type species is Udanoceratops shizhovai. The genus name means Udan's horned face, and it refers to where the fossils were found, the Udanser locality of the Jadogda Formation. The holotype's a large individual, and it includes a well-preserved, nearly complete skull and vertebrae. In 1993, a skull was assigned to Udanoceratops. The skull was nearly three feet or one meters long and came from the nearby Bayan Mandahu Formation, according to Tomas Jeshuas. That's pretty long, three feet for a leptoceratopsid. Well, in 2020, Lukas Shepinski said that the skull most likely belonged to Protoceratops. Helen Carinus, which is not a leptoceratopsid. In 2004, Viktor Tereshenko referred a juvenile specimen to Udanoceratops. That specimen came from the Baga Tariak locality, where Tereshenko said was part of the Jadok deformation. In 2010, Mahito Watabi and others found that the Baga Tariak locality correlated the best with the Barungoyat formation. The specimen's now been assigned, quote, Udanoceratops sp and or question mark Udanoceratops species sp. That means that there's some uncertainty around what exactly it is. In 2006, V.S. Tereshenko suggested Udanoceratops was, quote unquote, facultatively aquatic and that on land, Udanoceratops can move both quickly and slowly, quote, rapid and slow locomotor modes. Wow, that's a weird thing to say. Yes. <laughs> In the paper, it said that there was, quote, interesting data from previous papers that supported the idea of protoceratopoids. And I don't know why it said protoceratopoids. I tried to look that name or that word up and I didn't find that anywhere else. Yeah, sometimes people just make up words. I guess, uh, presumably, it includes leptoceratopsids. Mm. So I guess these various small ceratopsian-type things in Asia. Well, it supports the idea of them being buried in ways that suggest they had, quote, an affinity to water bodies during the animal's life, amphibiotic mode of life, end quote, meaning they had this amphibious life. Weird. Basically, no, quote, traces of long transportation before burial, end quote, which means they were buried close to where they died. They looked at a number of protoceratopoids, including Udanoceratops, and studied features, quote, that are presumably connected with particular adaptations, mode of life, and locomotion, end quote. They said that Udanoceratops had 10 thoracic vertebrae, that's the upper and middle part of the back, and a somewhat flexible neck. And they found that the upper and middle back area, quote, is relatively weakly mobile, end quote, while the lower back, quote, shows a high mobility. They said that protoceratopsids were, quote, probably amphibionts and relatively good swimmers, end quote, based on having the flattened tail with high neural spines, which is good for swimming movements. That's what I thought you were going to talk about. Yeah, they have a really big, tall tail. Yes. And you could see how someone would say, well, they flapped it back and forth, <laughs> and that's how they got through the water. Yeah. There's also the presence of mollusks in some nests, and the distribution of nests supports this water idea. They also said that 
Based on the tail, quote, Bagaceratops was probably the most aquatic, followed by Protoceratops, Udanoceratops, and the most terrestrial, Leptoceratops. Wow. Even rating them. Yes. Ranking them on their aquaticness. I am not sure how widely accepted these aquatic ideas are. It's an interesting idea. It almost reminds me of Stromer's Riddle, but for herbivores, Mm. because there are a lot of different Ceratopsians in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, around where these different Ceratopsians lived. And you could see how someone would basically how like Spinosaurus, well, it was aquatic and it ate the fish. So it wasn't competing directly with Carcharodontosaurus and these other big carnivores. Maybe Leptoceratops was herbivorous, but eating algae and sea ferns, (laughs) whatever (laughs) kind of plants grow in the water. (laughs) Or mollusks, like you said, were in the nests. That'd be interesting. That was the first paper I'd read about Leptoceratops is swimming. Yeah, I've never heard about this. I like it though. It's mm-hmm. clever. It, it's an interesting idea. It is. Now, other animals that lived around the same time and place as Udanoceratops included Avamimus, the Ovaraptorosaur, Bagaceratops, the Ceratopsian, Protoceratops, as well as amphibians, crocodilomorphs, mammals, and turtles. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.